Hi there, my name is Yu Jun Li. I'm currently a PhD student from MIT. In this video, I am going to present our work, Point Tech, an efficient point cloud accelerator. Moving from 2D images, machines start to perceive the word through 3D point clouds. A point cloud is a set of points that represent a physical object or 3D scene. It can be directly collected by sensors like LIDARs or can be generated from 2D stereo images via depth estimation. Nowadays, point cloud has become a very important and popular modality in our daily life with a wide range of applications, including augmented reality and autonomous driving. These applications require real-time interactions with humans, and thus it is crucial to emphasize not only high accuracy, but also low latency and low energy consumption. Compared to projecting 3D point clouds into 2D and then applying convolution neural networks, Directly processing 3D point clouds with point cloud networks yields up to 5% high accuracy with a seven times less number of multiply errors. However, point cloud networks run with much lower utilization on the existing general purpose hardware. A natural question arises, can existing neural network accelerators solve this dilemma? Unfortunately, the answer is no. This is because the point cloud convolution is fundamentally different from the conventional convolution. The input point cloud is extremely sparse, which can be up to four orders of magnitude sparser than 2D images. Unlike conventional convolution, whose simple sparsity results from ReLU activation function, the sparsity in point cloud convolution comes from the distribution of points in the physical space, which contains the real world information. Therefore, it places hard constraint to the sparsity pattern. In other words, the non-zeros will not dilate during the computation, which leads to a different computation pattern. In conventional convolution, even with the sparse inputs, each non-zero input pixel is multiplied with all non-zero weights. Such regular computation pattern is heavily exploited by all previous sparse accelerators. However, in point cloud convolution, the relationship among non-zero input points, non-zero output points, and weights are determined explicitly by calculation instead of pointer arithmetic. In this example, for this non-zero input point, only two in the nine multiplications are turned out to be useful to the outputs. Therefore, the utilization ratio of previous sparse neural accelerator will significantly drop. A different type of sparsity in point cloud leads to a different computation pattern and further results in two bottlenecks. One is that new operations are introduced to calculate the coordinates and find the neighbor points for the convolution, such as farthest point sampling and kernel mapping. We refer to these operations as mapping operations. The other is that we need to explicitly gather features and scatter aggregate the partial sums, causing huge data movement overhead. Specifically, point cloud convolution contains five steps. We will go through them one by one. First, given the input point cloud, we need to calculate the output coordinates. As mentioned above, normally the output point cloud is exactly the same as the input point cloud. For done sampling layers, including convolution with a try of two, we can either reduce the resolution of point cloud by quantizing the coordinates or sample the points via farthest point sampling or random sampling algorithms. For upsampling layers, it is the inverse of the corresponding downsampling. After we have output point cloud, we then search the neighbor points in the input point cloud for each output point. The neighborhood in the point cloud convolution is the same as the receptive field in the conventional convolution. The difference is that the neighborhood shape varies depending on the neighbor search algorithms. The most common neighbor search algorithms include ball query, whose neighborhood is in a shape of ball, kernel mapping, whose neighborhood is in a shape of cube, and k-nearest neighbor. Now we generate a list of input point, output point, win index maps for computation. Given the maps of input point, output point, weight, we then explicitly gather the input features. We group the features of input points corresponding to the same kernel. For example, for weak kernel minus one, minus one, there are maps containing 0 0.0 and 0 0.3. Therefore, the features of 0 0.0 and 0.3 are gathered and concatenated into a contiguous matrix. We then apply matrix matrix multiplication, that is, the fully connected layer to transform the input features. The shape of input matrix is the number of points by the number of input channels. The shape of weak kernel matrix is the number of input channels by the number of op channels. These weak kernel matrices can be shared, that is, the weak W minus one minus one to weak W11 are all the same matrix. Furthermore, one can apply more than one fully connected layers here, that is, such matrix multiplication can be repeated for multiple times. 
Finally, the partial sums are scattered and aggregated to the corresponding output location. For example, the partial sums of weight minus one minus one are scattered to output point one and point four separately. The aggregation can be mixed for accumulation, etc. We summarize the difference among point cloud networks, convolution networks, and graph convolution networks in this table. The difference in sparsity leads to low utilization of previous sparse neural accelerator. Newly introduced mapping operations are unsupported by previous neural accelerator. Explicit gather and scatter are not supported by previous graph convolution neural accelerator and previous point accelerator methodology. Evaluated on CPU, GPU, mobile GPU, and TPU, mapping operations and data movement can cover more than 50% of total latency. What's worth? For specialized neural accelerator like TPU, the data movement between coprocessors will significantly hurt the performance. So to tackle these challenges, we present PointTech, an efficient point cloud deep learning accelerator. It mainly composed of three parts, mapping unit, focusing on mapping operations, memory management unit, focusing on feature gathering, and matrix unit, focusing on feature transformation and scatter reduction. We first look at the mapping unit. Know that the ultimate goal of mapping operations is to generate input point, output point, and weight index maps. We found that no matter which algorithm is used, these maps are always constructed based on the comparison among distances. Take kernel mapping as an example. The comparison here is not greater than. For given output point, we find the input point whose distance to the output point is not greater than one in x, y, z dimension separately. Usually, this is done by querying the output point with the distance delta from the hash table that records the input point call coordinates. A query hit indicates a map. However, Hash table based implementation either requires on chip memory as large as 160 megabytes or cannot parallelize efficiently. Therefore, instead of hash table based on implementation, we convert the comparison internal map into coordinates intersection. Here is an example of finding the maps associating with the weight minus one minus one. The input and output point cloud is aligned at first. Since the weight minus one minus one is at the top left corner, we ship the input point cloud to the right bottom direction. That is, all input coordinates are added 1-1. One, one. Then the intersection between output and the shifted input point cloud is the maps we want. To efficiently perform such intersection detection, we choose to merge sort two point clouds and compare the adjacent elements to detect the duplicate points. Both merge sort and equal comparison here can be easily parallelized. For weight minus one zero, the process are the same. We shift the input point cloud to the bottom and detect the intersection between the output and shifted input point cloud by merge sorting two clouds and comparing the adjacent elements. After we go through all neighbor position from width minus one minus one to width one one, all the maps are found. Thus, we eventually convert the kernel mapping into parallelizable merge sort comparison. Similarly, we convert the k-nearest neighbor into a top k operation on the distances. Bulk query is just further filters of the points outside the predefined radius. And the farthest point sample is simply converted to max operation. Now point tech unifies and converts the mapping operations into max top k merge sort, these point cloud agnostic ranking based comparisons, and thus become able to efficiently support diverse mapping operations. The main component for the parallel comparison are the sorters and the merger. Running different mapping operations is just configuring the data flow in the mapping unit. Now we look into the memory management in point tech. Point cloud network consists of both sparse computation and dense computation. First, point tech supports stream sparse computation with caching. The state of the -art GPU implementation will first gather all required input feature vectors, concatenate them as contiguous matrix, then apply matrix matrix multiplication to calculate partial sums, and finally scatter to corresponding outputs. Each step requires independent rewrite access to the DRAM. In contrast, PointTech only fetch on-demanded input features and computation. The granularity of DRAM access is tile, similar to cache block. PointTech parallelizes the input and output channels dimension in the matrix multiplication, so they only access the partial sums of one output point in one cycle. Hence, there is no need for on-chip scatter network. Since the number of points are much larger than the number of channels, PointTech opts with stationary for inner loop nest to save on-chip memory footprint for weight data. By configuring the input buffers as cache, point tech reduces the number of off-chip read of reused data to nearly one time. Finally, point tech opts output stationary for outer loop nests to eliminate the off-chip scatter of partial sums. That is, it will not swap out the output features before it travels all neighbors and all input channels. 
compared to GPU gather scatter computation flow, point access the off chip memory footprint. For FC layers and convolution with kernel size of one, the matrix computation is dense. Point tech is able to fuse the computation of consecutive dense layers in the point cloud convolution. Remember that in the point cloud convolution, in between the gather and scatter, the matrix multiplication can be repeated for multiple times. Since all reused data are stored independently, the intermediate data for this consecutive matrix multiplication is huge. Layer fusion helps to reduce the off-chip memory access of these intermediate activations. However, conventional special layer fusion has complicated logic overhead, restricts the usage of intermediate buffers, and fixes the number of layers for fusion. The number of consecutive dense layers varies among different point cloud networks and even among different convolution blocks in the same model. Therefore, point tech exploits the temporal layer fusion, which only requires simple logical modification and supports flexible buffer usage for better layer hiring and flexible number of fused layers. Here is an example of point tech fusing three consecutive layers. In the left shows the DRAM memory footprint per point. In stage 0, point tech loads layer 0 features of 64 point, point 0 to point 63 point DRAM and obtains the corresponding layer 1 features. Since the computation in stage 0 used up all loaded data, layer 0 tile is released from input buffers. Switching to layer 1, the features of layer 1 is transferred from the output buffers to the input buffers, and the features of layer 2 are calculated. Since the output channels are doubled, each point now takes up two entries in the buffers. Since the previous stage only uses half of the input features 0.0 to 0.31, the layer 1 tile capacity is halved. Switch to layer 2, the features of layer 2 are transferred from upper buffers to input buffers, and the features of final outputs are calculated. Since layer 2 is the last fused layers, we release the layer 2 features from input buffers, write back the final output to DRAM, and switch back to the previous layer, which is layer 1. Since layer 1 tile capacity is non-zero, we continue to compute layer 1 for the rest of features from point 0.32 to point 0.63. Since all data of layer 1 are used, layer 1 tile is released. Switching to layer 2, the features of layer 2 are transferred and the features of final outputs are calculated. Since layer 2 is the last fused layer, we release the layer 2 features from input buffers, write back the final outputs to DRAM, and switch back to the previous layer. Since layer 1 tile capacity is 0, we continue to switch back to previous layer. Since layer 0 tile capacity is 0 as well, we will continue to compute the next tile in layer 0 from point 64 to point 127. As we can see from left, layer fusion only reads the input features of layer 0 and writes the output features of layer 2, and thus the off-chip memory footprint is three times smaller than that without layer fusion. With the help of mapping unit and memory management unit, point tech now supports various point tech networks. Now let's see our experimental results. We evaluate on four different point cloud applications, classification, plus segmentation, detection, and semantic segmentation. We use five different data sets containing various sizes and modality for input point clouds, from daily objects to indoor scenes to spatial outdoor scenes. We pick eight point cloud networks, including both classical and state-of-the-art ones. They are widely adopted by the point cloud deep learning community. The hardware baseline includes server level products like Intel Xeon CPU, NVIDIA 2080 Type GPU, TPU V3, and edge devices like Justin Xavier NX, Justin Nano, Raspberry Pi, and the state of the art specialized point cloud network ASIC Mesorasi. We have two variants of point tech a full version point tech with 64 by 64 CCD array, and edge version point tech with 16 by 16 computation array for fair comparison. Here we show the performance scan of full version point tech over several products. The x-axis shows different networks and the y-axis shows speed up and energy savings separately. As we can see, point tech is able to achieve 3.7 times speed up and 22 times energy savings over 2080 type GPU and 53 times speed up over TPU V3 and 90 times speed up over Xeon CPU. Here we show the performance scan of the edge version point tech over the edge devices. Again, the axis shows the different networks and the y axis shows speed up and energy savings separately. As we can see, edge point tech is able to achieve 2.5 times speed up and 8 times energy savings over Justin Xavier, 9.8 times speed up over Justin Nano, and 141 times speed up over Raspberry Pi. Here we show the speed up and energy savings of edge point tech compared to previous state of the art point cloud 
accelerated Maserati. The benchmarks are smaller since Maserati only supports networks that sharing the weights among different neighbors. Edge Point Deck is 14 times faster than Maserati without additional hardware support and 4.3 times faster than Maserati with additional hardware support on average. To explore the source of performance gain for Point Tech, we first break down the runtime latency of mapping operations in the point cloud conversion. As shown in the left, on CPU and GPU, our merge salt based conversion for kernel mapping actually worsens the performance. It is because the excessive off trip memory access for the intermediate data in the merge salt and doubled the point cloud size during the post processing. However, Point Tech especially pipelines the stages of merge shots and intersection detection. The overhead is canceled. Furthermore, Point Tech runs 1.4 times faster running kernel mapping over hash table based ASIC implementation and 1.18 times faster running curly nearest neighbor over quick sort based top K engine in previous work. Using one versatile architecture apart from a specialized design for each mapping operation independently. Here we break down the latency of the matrix multiplication. On GPU, Fetching only the on-demanded input features saves the data movement cost by three times. The matrix matrix multiplication is thus decomposed into matrix vector multiplication, which significantly increases the computation overhead due to the low utilization of the GPU cores. However, such overhead is removed in point tech because of the computation power of the accessory array. Here we demonstrate the offshore memory footprint. On the left shows the probability density of the Duran footprint per layer with and without caching. A wider region indicates higher frequency of given data sites. The shape of distribution are nearly the same without and with caching, which indicates that the caching works consistently on different layers and on different data sets. On average, the caching reduces the layer DRAM access by 3.5 times to 6.3 times. On the left shows the reduction ratio of the DRAM access when using the layer fusion. Compare against the running networks layer by layer independently, our layer fusion helps cut the DRAM access from 33% to 41%. Finally, unlike our design, the previous accelerator method rise is limited since it does not support independent weights for different neighbors. It is crucial for nowadays state-of-the-art point cloud networks. Co-designed with the neural architecture, point tech rivals method rise by 130 times speed up with 9.1% high accuracy running the segmentation task. In summary, with the rise of point cloud modality, the rapid development of point cloud deep learning brings new challenges and exciting opportunities for intelligent hardware design. The capacity of point cloud leads to two challenges, the newly introduced mapping operations for searching input, output, and width maps, and the explicit data movement from gather and scatter the sparsely distributed features. Our point tech addresses these challenges by converting diverse mapping operations into salt based computation with one versatile architecture and reducing the memory footprint by flexible caching and layer fusion. Point tech paves the way for efficient point cloud recognition. That's the end of our talk. Thanks for watching.